take your power back because your situation is not keeping you stuck. That person is not keeping you stuck. You're keeping yourself stuck. Hey girl, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Trinity. If you're new here today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you six things to let go of. I recently did a video on seven things to stop doing in order to live a happier life. I think that's what it's called. But y'all seem to really love that video. So I decided to do something similar to that, but not quite the same. But the message still stands. These are things that you should let go of in order to live a happier life, in order to have better relationships, and even to have a better relationship with yourself. So if you're interested, just keep on watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, especially if this is the type of content that you like to see. And let's get right into it. The first thing you should let go of is negative self-talk. If you have low self-esteem or low confidence, if you're really insecure, if you're a jealous person, if you procrastinate a lot, if you have a whole lot of limiting beliefs, you probably do a lot of negative self-talk. What is that? It's literally exactly what it sounds like. Talking to yourself in a negative way, not speaking life into yourself, not uplifting yourself, but literally tearing yourself down with your words. Telling yourself you're not beautiful, telling yourself you're not worthy, telling yourself that you're less attractive than someone else telling yourself that your hair is less beautiful than someone else's telling yourself that your skin complexion is not as beautiful as someone else's this is all negative self-talk you are chipping away at yourself little by little every time you say these things to yourself but you need to realize that the only reason why you believe these things is that you've repeated them for so long without rebutting you only believe that you're not as beautiful as someone else because you've told yourself that for so long maybe you've told yourself that because someone else said it to you first, but you have constantly repeated it. You have made your brain believe that that is true. I used to do it too, trust me. I talk about it all the time on my channel. I used to have really low self-esteem, really low confidence, and I used to pick myself apart real bad. But one day I looked in the mirror and I was just like, you wouldn't even talk to a stranger like this. You wouldn't talk to someone you actually love like this. So do you really love yourself? Not only would I not have talked to a stranger like that or someone I loved, I wouldn't let anyone else talk to me like that. I wouldn't let somebody just come up to me and tell me I'm not pretty. I wouldn't let someone just come up to me and tell me that I don't deserve love. I would look at them like they were crazy. It's so important for you to speak life into yourself and to affirm yourself because you cannot wait for someone else to do those things for you. As long as you rely on other people and what they say about you, your opinion about yourself will always be changing because one you can't control what everyone else thinks about you you can't control what anyone else says about you and two people change their minds all the time it all starts with you you have to start talking to yourself the way you want someone else to talk to you you have to start treating yourself the way you want someone else to treat you because how you feel about yourself influences literally everything you do the decisions you've made so far as it pertains to dating the decisions you've made as it pertains to job opportunities and career the friendships you've chosen everything you've settled for in this life all of those decisions have been influenced by how you feel about yourself so let this be the last day that you look in the mirror and talk to yourself like trash you deserve better than that and deep down you know that it all starts with you and i promise you the moment you start speaking life into yourself and building yourself up as opposed to tearing yourself down you will start attracting people in your life who feel that same way about you and you won't settle for mediocre experiences mediocre relationships it all starts with you and how you feel about yourself the second thing you should let go of is your comfort zone as long as you're comfortable you will not grow you might grow a little bit but you will never grow to your fullest potential as long as you're stuck in this box that is your comfort zone because that's exactly what it is a box a box that's not too big and not too small it's just enough room for you to move around just a little bit but you're only going to get but so far in that box it's not meant for you to grow past a certain size you can have all the dreams in the world you can have all the goals in the world but if your box is not big enough for those goals and those dreams you will never be able to make them happen you will never be able to bring them into fruition because if it doesn't fit it doesn't fit you can't force it so you have to expand beyond where you are right now you have to do some things that might feel a little weird some things might feel a little off and it's going to be very unfamiliar but that's when you know you're growing do whatever it is that you've been wanting to do that makes you feel super uncomfortable even just thinking about it because you need new you need unfamiliar a lot of people are scared to be uncomfortable because unfamiliar scares them and that's a normal feeling to have. But you can't get new things, a new life, you can't become a new person by doing the same old 
things. Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting new results is the definition of insanity. Y'all know that saying, old keys don't unlock new doors? Yeah, you have to try something new. If your past relationships have not worked for you, if your past friendships have not worked for you, if the past jobs you've chosen have not worked for you, if the way you've been carrying yourself has not been working for you, you're gonna have to make some changes and try something new. And like I said, it's gonna feel a little weird when you expand and really try to broaden your horizons, but it's necessary and it's so much better to be uncomfortable than to be stuck in the same place for your whole life. Number three, you need to let go of the need for validation. What exactly is validation? It's the act of checking or proving the validity or accuracy of something. Or basically, getting someone to confirm something that you already at least somewhat believe. A lot of the time when we ask our friends, do I look ugly? Is this outfit ugly? Does this hairstyle look bad on me? We low key already think that we look ugly or that the hairstyle looks bad on us or that the outfit looks bad on us or that the color looks bad on us. We already think those things. There's something in us that believes that, which is why we feel like we have to ask someone else. And nine times out of 10, you're asking because you want that person to tell you the opposite of what you already think. But the problem really is the fact that you believe those things. Truth be told, you only care about what other people say about you or what other people think about you if you already have a negative perception of yourself. When you truly love yourself and you're truly happy with the decisions that you make concerning yourself, you don't need a whole lot of other people to confirm or deny something. So the next time you feel the need to ask a whole bunch of people for validation, just hear my voice in your head saying, what do you think? How do you feel? Do you like what you're wearing? Do you think you're pretty? Do you like the hairstyle? Do you like the outfit? Do you think you should take the job? Do you think it's a good fit for what you want to do in life? Because you are the only one who has to live with your decisions. And at the end of the day, if you don't like the outfit and you don't feel comfortable in it, it doesn't matter what somebody else likes. Cause they might tell you yes, and now you're walking around in some shoes that are uncomfortable as I don't know what in a dress that is suffocating you like you have to have your own opinion you have to know yourself so well that you don't need other people to validate you I always say relying on other people's opinions of you is a very dangerous game to play putting your worth in someone else's hands is a very dangerous game to play because people go where the wind blows. One minute they love you, one minute they hate you, one minute they like what you're wearing, next minute they think you look a mess, one minute they think you're pretty, the next minute they think you're not. So have an opinion of your own, validate yourself, know yourself because that is the key to true confidence. Number four, you need to let go of limiting beliefs. A limiting belief is a thought or a state of mind that you believe to be absolutely true and stops you from doing certain things. All men cheat. No one will support my business. The industry is oversaturated. I don't deserve love. This is too good to be true. There's not even enough money in the world for me to be rich. That probably won't happen for me. These are all limiting beliefs. If you're not new here, you know, I talk about this all the time. I'm so sorry if you're tired of hearing it, but there's someone who needs to hear it a million times. The reason why you have to nip these beliefs in the bud is that all of these statements and beliefs influence and dictate everything you do in life. Just like the negative self-talk, what you settle for in dating, your standards or the lack thereof, the jobs and careers you pursue, how you respond to someone trying to love you or self-sabotage. These are all direct results of limiting beliefs that you have probably been subconsciously thinking. And that's the thing. Sometimes we believe all these things and we don't even realize that we're thinking these thoughts. You've probably experienced some type of trauma in your past, in your childhood, whenever, that has caused you to think these things. And this is why shadow work is so important because shadow work will cause you to bring things to the surface that you have been trying to bury for so long. I do have a video on shadow work. I will link it down below in the description box if you're interested in watching that after this one. But shadow work will help you to figure out why why you believe all of these things. It'll help you to remember how it all started, where these thoughts came from, and it'll also help you to analyze and take a really close look at how these limiting beliefs influence your actions on a day-to-day -day basis. Once you do shadow work, you have to figure out how to replace all of these limiting beliefs with thoughts that will suit you better, thoughts that will suit your relationships better. Your limiting beliefs keep you in that comfort zone. They're only meant to keep you feeling safe. They don't want you to take risks. They don't want you to do anything that could potentially harm you. So they're gonna keep you in that box. But it's up to you to find the root and to allow yourself to expand and to truly believe that you deserve more, that you deserve better. The next thing you need to let go of, victim mentality. It's what's keeping you stuck. It's what's keeping you stagnant. It's what's keeping you stuck in the past, stuck in your trauma, stuck in your hurts, 
stuck in your bitterness, stuck in resentment. Pointing the finger and feeling bad for yourself is literally counterproductive when you need to move on. When you're so busy focusing on the fact that someone else did something to you or something happened to you, you're literally missing an opportunity to grow. You're missing an opportunity to learn because you're not allowing yourself to see the role that you played. You're not allowing yourself to take accountability for what you allowed. And until you can see where you lacked, you will never grow or become better. You can't make every situation about everybody else. And that's not to invalidate your feelings. Yes, you can be hurt. Yes, you can be disappointed. Yes, you can be a little bitter, a little resentful, especially if something traumatic has happened to you. But as as long as you are stuck in that, as long as you do not take accountability for the role that you played and the decision that you made to stay in that situation or to allow that person to do those things to you, there's no way you'll become better. No one can carry you to your next point in life. You have to do that yourself. Sometimes without an apology, sometimes without closure, because you cannot be in the past and the present or the past and the future at the same time. Decide that you're done with the situation. Decide that you're done allowing it to keep you stuck and make a decision to move on with your life. Take your power back because your situation is not keeping you stuck. That person is not keeping you stuck. You're keeping yourself stuck. It's time to put your big girl pants on. And lastly, number six, you need to let go of your fear of failure. If you're afraid of failure, you will never start anything. And let me be the first to tell you that failure is inevitable. I know that's not what you wanna hear, but welcome to the real world. Things will never go exactly how you plan because you only have a certain level of control in life. So your only option is to really change your perception of failure. Instead of looking at failure like a bad thing, instead of looking at things not going your way as failure. Look at not trying or not taking the step as failure because really that's the only way you fail. You are literally failing by standing still. When you're playing Monopoly, if you choose not to move on the board at all, you're not getting any experience. You're not even giving yourself the opportunity to get to where you wanna be or to get close to where you wanna be. Everyone will literally be moving around you. And there might be some people who have to take a few steps back every now and then, but how would you look? standing at start criticizing people who had the courage to at least take a step. One of the best things I've ever done was learn how to fail forward. Choosing to respect each failure for the lessons they teach you and allowing yourself to apply those lessons to future efforts, even if those two end up failing because failure is experience. It's gathering data, it's gathering information in order to make your next experience better. Having a bunch of Fail relationships only helps you to get closer to that one relationship that you're really meant to be in. All the things you've gone through in your previous relationships that did not last have built character in you so that you can be better for the person who's actually meant to have you. I'm so grateful every single day because I know that the life I have today is a result of me failing several times and learning and applying. So as always, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. I hope something resonated with you, even if it was just one of the points. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.